You want to start that over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Apigee Up Close webinar. I'm Keith Danikin, I'm Solution Architect with Apigee, part of Google Cloud Platform. We do these webinars every two weeks and the topics are based on popular demand. This week I'm here with Paul Williams and Paul, what are we gonna talk about today? Hi hey Keith, uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, microservices, PCF and how Apigee works with them. Great, let's get started. So, what are microservices anyway, Keith? Do you have any ideas? What's interesting about microservices is every time I ask somebody that, I get a different answer. So, okay. it's a uh, set of small services, it's polyglot, it's going to be um, the opposite of a monolith. I hear a lot of different terminologies. So, what do you think about when you think about microservices? Well, a good friend of mine once called it the toilet paper of software because they're small enough that you can just kind of use them and throw them away if you need to. <laughs> Um, but really what it boils down to is the benefits of microservices architecture allow you to have a small, self-contained portion of software that's running inside of a, a larger application. And uh, <clears throat> that small software can be run with a particular process on a particular language. And the other pieces of software that make up the rest of that package might be based on other pieces of uh, other processes or other technologies. Okay. And that allows you a lot of flexibility when you're building your applications. It's a great thing, but what comes with that is the need to be able to connect those services together. Because it's not just one service that's providing everything that you need. If you had, say, a standard e-commerce app, you might have one service that's providing a catalog, another service that's providing the cart, another service that's providing pricing information, for instance. Sure. So we've got new services. And we've solved the problem of the monolith, but with that come a whole new set of challenges. Sure, right. And these challenges are solved in a lot of different ways across the industry. Uh, you can see a lot of technologies that are out there to support microservices like Docker and uh, OpenShift, Kubernetes, and of course, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Mm -hmm. um, so the requirements of, of microservices architecture, basically, that you have some kind of managed API interdependence uh, security controls, uh, monitoring and logging, and uh, consistent governance across your package. And we uh, can achieve that by using Apigee uh, as a API front end for those concerns. So Apigee is going to manage that whole consumption side of the equation there. Well, it's the bridge between that user group of uh, people writing applications uh, and consuming that, those services and the services management but also in the interconnectedness between those services so that you can control and manage and monitor what's going on inside your stack. Okay. Um, you know, and you can see that there's deep integrations with uh, multiple stacks out there, whether that's Kubernetes or uh, on Azure Cloud or inside of the PCF stack. And really what we're driving towards is being able to manage the full API lifecycle around microservices. Everything from uh, conception through development, testing, and deployment. Mm -hmm. And all of the technologies that are required in order to make that happen. Of course, we always start this journey with our uh, outside-in philosophy, which is first thinking about what the user wants to, uh, wants to achieve by using your system or APIs. Uh, and our users in this case are going to be application developers who are building an experience on top of the APIs that you're providing. If we think about what they need and we build to what they need, they're more likely to use it and it's more likely to be usable and we'll get better value out of those systems. Sure. I remember when, you know, I used to be a J2E developer many years ago. Uh, somewhere in the spec it said I had to write a service. So I'd write a service, but I wasn't thinking too much about how somebody might actually use that service and what their experience would be in terms of consumption. Yeah. Well, and that's a different way of thinking about it. That's the typical exposure model. I have some data. I'm going to put it out there and see what people are going to do with it. Right. Um, if you think about things from the other perspective, from the consumption model, what do people need in order to achieve their business objectives in our systems? Then we wind up with software that's more intuitive and more usable. Sure. So how does this fit in with Apigee and PCF? Well, 
uh, PCF is a uh, software stack that's designed for developing and, and exposing microservices. You know, you were just uh, uh, recently talking to the PCF guys, right? I was just at the uh, the Spring One conference in Denver, and yeah, a lot of folks were there. They're really excited about um, Spring in particular, but they were also talking a little bit about Cloud Foundry and uh, how you would build your own custom tailored cloud environment to host things. Yeah, sure. And uh, PCF is a big part of that because they have uh, structured um, framework for uh, building and exposing uh, services using Spring Boot, mm -hmm. uh, among other technologies, of course. Sure. The basic philosophy behind Cloud Foundry is, here's my code, run it on the cloud for me, I do not care how. <laughs> That's a haiku. It is. Now, we can extend that and add a second verse to it and say, uh, with Apogee in mind, I do care a bit how other people use it. Please make that easy. All right. So together but with Pivotal Cloud Foundry and Apogee, we can uh, manage and accelerate modern app development with Pivotal managing the backend development and Apogee managing the way that that is, uh, with the way that you allow consumers to consume that services. Right, so we're using the right tool for the job. In this case, Pivotal is fantastic at hosting all those services. Apogee is very well suited to managing the whole left side of your value chain there where people are going to access and consume these services. Exactly right. So we want to reduce the complexity of the developers so that they don't have to worry as much about the cross-cutting concerns in their service development, while at the same time the, the folks who are developing those APIs don't have to worry about the business logic and how that's implemented. So how do we do that? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> How do we share our PCF app with other developers? Um, well, you know, when you have uh, a PCF application, you're going to have internal business units, partners, uh, and open, uh, maybe an open community of developers uh, that are going to be sharing your, your services that you're creating. Sure. What we do is we use Apogee as a facade in front of the Pivotal Cloud so that we can control, monitor, manage, and, um, and govern the use of those microservices from the outside world, but additionally, we have a small component called the Apogee Micro Gateway, which we use in inside those services, in fact, co-located uh, with the Pivotal Cloud Foundry services so that we can control, monitor, and manage the interactions within the service stack. Got it. So the whole goal is to empower partners to easily discover what your service your services are, uh, secure your APIs from cyber threats or traffic spikes, uh, and to be able to monitor your performance and usage of your services by partners. We have a couple of different models that we describe when we're talking about how Apogee and PCF work together. Mm -hmm. The first is uh, about application modernization. So we have an existing on-premises legacy application, uh, which we want to uh, beef up using modern development and technology techniques. Mm -hmm. We're going to break that apart into microservices and Cloud Foundry is a great target for that. Uh, but before we do that, we'll start by putting a facade of Apogee in front of that so that we can begin to break those into consum consumable services, routing the new re uh, requests to Pivotal Cloud Foundry while maintaining the old requests to our legacy application. So in that sense, um Apogee is going to sit in front of this, and that's going to give us the luxury of being able to change the back end while still maintaining that contract with the front end or the exactly. client. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's a management layer so that we can manage a migration. Very good. A lot of our customers are struggling with that. How do you modernize? You know, they've got stuff that's been built up over years and years, and you know, there's the standard lift and shift approach, but uh, this is more of a gradual approach, so allowing you to transition slowly, rebuild or refactor your architecture. And really what you're doing is, is you're getting to that value a lot earlier in the process. So instead of having, having to wait five, six, eight years before you can see the value of your development process, you can start to see it within just a couple of months. Mm -hmm. That's good. Another model that we use when we're talking about Pivotal Cloud Foundry is microservices protection. So we're going to use Apogee Cloud as the location for all the information about analytics, the dev portal, uh, and API management and maintenance. Uh, but we're going to still serve everything out of Pivotal Cloud Foundry uh, using the micro gateway co-located with your microservices. 
So what's the advantage of that approach? Why not just serve everything out of the cloud? Seems easier. Well, sure, if you can do that, that's a great option. But if for whatever reason you need to maintain on-premise, maintain your, your microservices on-premise, then you're going to need to have a, that small component, if your demands aren't heavy, uh, for uh, processing uh, the, uh, the request quickly, yeah. reducing latency, and getting the, the data out to users sooner. So a good approach for people who have a, um, a low latency need or maybe a compliance need. I know some customers I've spoken to, they're not allowed to take that data. It's not allowed to leave their environment there. So it's easier for them to get a certification on their compliance if they're running that way. Yeah, it can be a little bit easier to sell to the security group, uh, and it still gets you steps in the right direction. Very good. So it seems like there's a few different options for how you would integrate Cloud Foundry with Apogee. Uh, sure. Could you talk a little bit about what those different techniques are for integrating Cloud Foundry and Apogee? Well, sure. The, the most direct technique or the most uh, traditional technique would be simply to have uh, Apogee in the cloud or on-premise and route your calls through that and accept only calls from, uh, from the Apogee message processors in your Cloud Foundry services. Now, if you wanted to take that a step further, you could deploy the uh, Edge Micro Gateway to those services. Now, the uh, Edge Micro Gateway is a component which can be co-located with each of the individual services on your Pivotal Cloud Foundry stack, mm -hmm. and that's going to allow you to reduce your overall latency. It's somewhat limiting, so you're going to want to look and make sure that uh, the options that Micro Gateway allows you are the ones that you need in order to achieve your business objectives. And of course, there's a hybrid approach where you can kind of do a little bit of both. Sure. Uh, where the maybe the external traffic is handled by uh, the full edge stack and in traffic internal to the uh, your network or internal to the uh, your microservices stack is managed by Micro Gateway. So. How do customers get started with this? If a customer wanted to start doing this, they wanted to think about um, where to start with Apogee and Pivotal Cloud Foundry. What's a, what's a good first step for this? How do we, what do we see people doing when they're taking on that first project or that, that first um, test to see if this can work? Well, the best advice that I can give anybody who's trying to get started is to get started. Sure. Uh, you can go on Apogee.com right now and sign up for a free trial account and start using uh, Apogee Edge to figure out how our policies work together and how they can start to be used to uh, to front the traffic that you're going to be seeing from from your from your projects. Uh, that can also be used with a Micro Gateway, and you can start to figure out how how those items work together. Um, after you've kind of poked around with it a little bit and kind of gotten your toe a little bit wet, you might want to go on and look at some of the materials that we have online in our ebooks and webinar series like this one. Very good. All right. Well, Keith, thanks so much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for coming by and showing up on the webcast today. It was very interesting to learn about Pivotal Cloud Foundry and how Apogee works for And Keith, thank you so much for letting me come on. It's been a blast and I hope to do more. Wonderful. So thanks. We'll see you on the next webcast. Ciao.